Hi, this is Carlton Mills, bringing you a word from the Bible, which I hope shall be to our eternal blessing. The title of this message is Monarchial Mania. Our text is Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. It reads, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So reads God's holy word. As Great Britain honours its new King Charles III, as citizens of a heavenly country, we that are born of the Spirit should not be deceived by Satan the dragon. As we observe with our physical eyes the events of the King's coronation, let us be sure we are also seeing with our spiritual eyes. That England, with a landmass of a little over 51,000 square miles, should rise to become Great Britain to rule the largest landmass the world had ever known of a little under 14 million square miles after the fall of Rome is not a human enterprise, but is a fulfillment of prophecy. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 2. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. As I understand it, along with the prophecies of Daniel, that beast symbolizes the empires that rule the world before the return of Christ to establish his eternal kingdom. Closely aligned and promoting the beast from the sea is the beast from the earth. Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 12. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He is also known as the false prophet, chapter 16, verse 13, for example. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. The prophecy of the divine drama of the book of Revelation reveals events that we are now living through. Revelation chapter 17, verses 9 to 11. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, the Roman Catholic Church, and there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. We can certainly look back in history to see the seven heads of the beast, in which six of them are in the Bible. Head 1, Egypt. Head 2, Assyria. Head 3, Babylon. Head 4, Medo-Persia. Head 5, Greece. Head 6, Rome. Head 7 has to be discerned from European history. So why Europe, I hear you ask? Europeans are from the nations of Japheth, the eldest son of Noah, and it is the Western European nations in particular that have ruled the world since the Greek Empire under Alexander the Great, Beast Head 5. Thus we see many European nations following the fall of Rome, Beast Head 6, vying to wear the crown of King of the World, which finally rested on the head of Great Britain to qualify as Beast Head 7. Do we agree that in the coronation of King Charles III, that what we are seeing is the outworking of the has-been power of Beast Head 7 Great Britain and the false prophet, the Church of England? As prophesied, Great Britain lost its head to be replaced with the eighth king of the world. And so with little guesswork needed, America qualifies as the final Beast Head 8, which since the end of the Second World War has been king of the world and promoted by its false prophet, corrupt Protestant churches, in which if one were to be singled out, it would be the Presbyterians that were very instrumental in the birth of the nation. Our American brethren love to parlay politics and even swear loyalty to the American flag that is deemed to be a living thing. Brothers and sisters, 
it is only a matter of time that America too shall have its king, its first and last. And let's be sure, he will not be an ordinary man like King Charles III, but he will be the Antichrist, that wicked, the man of sin, the son of perdition, Mr. 666, whose surname is deciphered as Fox. We shall see that from Washington, Roosevelt through to Obama, Trump, Biden and eventually Fox, who with the support of we the people shall make himself King of America and the world. Revelation chapter 22 verse 3 And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his slaves shall serve him. Yes, as slaves of King Jesus, purchased by his precious blood, who shall serve him in the eternal ages, we shall not dishonour him by dishonouring Britain's King Charles III in his coronation. And so, as we are exhorted to do, we pray for him and his government. But, by the grace of God, we will not bow to America's Mr. 666. Thanks for listening. God willing, I shall have another message for you next time. God bless you.